Okay, so let's compare your answers with mine. We should have about the same thing because we both used the tracing from our notes and folded the centroid. So your answer should not be very far away from mine here. So when I measured point A to the centroid, I got 3.2 centimeters or 32 millimeters. Centroid to point E was 1.6 centimeters. And then B to the centroid was 4.8 centimeters. The centroid to point D was 2.4 centimeters. When we went from C to the centroid, I got 4.2 centimeters. And centroid to F, I got 2.1 centimeters. So using my measurements, and again, hopefully yours are close to the same, we should be able to write a conjecture about the relationship between these distances. How do these distances compare to these distances? And so I hope that you can see that all of these are half as much as these amounts, or in other words, these amounts are twice as much as this. And so we want to be able to write that into a conjecture. Remember, that's just a conclusion we're coming to after observations. This is using inductive reasoning. So the distance from the vertex to the centroid, which is these top numbers, is how much compared to the distance from the centroid to the midpoint, which is these lower numbers. So according to mine, it is twice as much. This amount is twice as much as this amount. So let's use that conjecture. And again, we'll be able to prove that, so that'll really become a theorem. And apply that information down here. Now, how do we know point V is a centroid? Notice each one of these segments starts at a vertex, goes to a point where we have these tick marks on each side. So I know you point U as a midpoint by these tick marks. So this has to be a median because it starts at a vertex and goes to a midpoint. Again, vertex to midpoint, vertex to midpoint. That's how I know V is a centroid. So I don't have to be told that in words. I can see from the symbols that these are medians and that we know that they intersect at the centroid. So on the first part, we are given that V to S is three, and we wanna know what V to R is. So remember, we just made a conjecture that this distance from the vertex to the centroid is twice as much as from the centroid to the midpoint. So if this is three, this is twice as much, so it would be six. On this second one, it says P to V is 10. And we want to know what is V to T? That's my question. Well, again, we learned from vertex to centroid is twice as much as centroid to midpoint. So this time we're given the twice as much. So in order to find V to T, we're gonna have to actually take half this time. So V to T would be five. This is twice as much as five. Now this is probably the most um, difficult of the, the three. We're given Q to U. So we're given the whole length of the median, not one of its parts. We're asked for each one of the parts. So the easiest way to do this is to um, label the shortest part, that's from the centroid to the midpoint, as x, and the longer part is twice as long, so it would be 2x. And these together make up QU, so x plus 2x is my 18.9. So now I can solve for x, combining those like terms gives me 3x equals 18.9, and dividing both sides by 3 gives me x to be 6.3. So X is the shorter part, the VU, so VU is 6.3. QV is the longer part, that's double this amount, so 6.3 times two would give me 12.6. And double check, do 12.6 and 6.3 add to get 18.9, and they do. All right, so can you find centers of a quadrilateral? And yes, you can. You can do these same folds for any polygon, not just triangles. But remember, we focus so much on triangles because they're used so much in the real world because of their rigid rigidity, because they are such a stable figure. 
Now, don't lose your patty paper that you used today to find the centroid. And remember, you're going to need six more sheets of patty paper for the homework tonight. You won't use all of them on your homework tonight, but you need to save all seven sheets for your homework or for your lesson tomorrow, 8.2. So make sure that you do not lose all seven sheets.